Hello. Last lectures where we discussed and showed the events that occur during um, fertilization of sperm and ova in the case of external uh, fertilization. Then we discussed uh, how these events uh, differ in a case of internal uh, fertilization as in uh, mammals. Then we discussed an experiment that shows how the sperm is attracted toward the ova by a process of chemotaxis in which a chemical is secreted from the egg resac and this uh, um, direct the sperm for the orientation towards the uh, egg. Then we show how this um, uh, uh, sperm reach the egg once the resect is um, uh, uh, binds to the receptor RGC on the sperm cell membrane. And this will induce uh, signaling events inside the sperm head, which lead to increase in the uh, calcium concentration in the cytoplasm. And we concluded last lecture by uh, another experiment showing how the calcium level in uh, the uh, sea urchin sperm after exposure to a uh, resac increase dramatically in just one uh, second. And we concluded that uh, thus upon meeting resac, these uh, sea urchin sperm are instructed where to go and are given the motive force to get there. And if you remember the motive force are given by the high metabolic rate that occur due to the presence of uh, mitochondria in the neck of the sperm. Today, we'll start the lecture by uh, talking about the acrosome reaction. So actually the acrosomal reaction has two components. It is the fusion of the acrosomal uh, vesicle uh, with the sperm plasma membrane. A process is called the exocytosis that results in the release of the acrosomal uh, contents. As well, it is followed by extension of the acrosomal uh, process. The content with egg jelly causes exocytosis of a sperm acrosomal vesicle and release of a lot of proteolytic enzyme that digest the path through the jelly coat to the egg surface. The extension of the acrosomal process arises by the polymerization of the actin molecules into actin filaments. So once the sperm has penetrated the egg jelly, the acrosome process contact the surface of the egg and another molecule uh, uh, mediate this process, which is called binding, which mediate the process of, uh, of uh, contacting. Here you can see, this is the normal uh, head of the uh, 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 sperm. And you can see that the acrosomal uh, uh, process is bounded by the acrosomal membrane and is bounded as well by the sperm cell membrane. So you have two membranes. And you can see that the actin started to uh, uh, polymerize and it tend to, to form a, a process. So you can see that uh, uh, in this before contacting to, this, uh, to the egg membrane. Once they start moving toward the egg, the membrane, uh, uh, or the, the double membrane are ruptured to release the contents of the acrosome. These acrosome uh, uh, enzymes tend to lie the way uh, to the egg. And here you can see the polymerization of the actin microfilaments and the surface now, the head of the sperm is guarded by uh, the binding uh, 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 protein on the membrane. So these events occur in the sea ocean sperm. Again, the acrosome membrane lying directly beneath the acrosome membrane lying directly beneath the sperm membrane fuse together to release the content and, and rupture to release the content of the acrosomal vesicle. 
And as well, the across again, the actin molecules assemble to form microtubules or microfilaments to extend the acrosomal process outward. So you can see here, this is diagrammatically, but here actually, this is the, the real events um, take, uh, taken by a, a scanning electron microscope. So what's binding? Actually, bindings of different sea ocean are different. Hence, the, these are species-specific protein receptors. You can see here, these are the head of the sperm carrying above the head. You, you can see the egg binding protein, which is the binding, which is, which is coating the acrosomal process. And this is the egg cell membrane have a receptor, you can see that the sperm receptor have a receptor for the, for the binding protein. So the sperm binding doesn't occur over the entire egg surface. So that's mean the egg have limited uh, number of sperm binding site. And of course, this limits the number of sperm that will be connect, contacted or uh, attached to the egg membrane. So the binding receptor, this binding receptor is around 350 kilodalton protein on the egg has been is uh, recently isolated. And this receptor aggregate into complexes on the egg cell surface. That's, that's mean that these receptor are aggregated in one place on egg cell surface. So what's polyspermy? Generally polyspermy, it is the ability to, uh, it's the ability of the egg to be fertilized by more than one sperm. So it must be avoided. So the sea urchin has two mechanisms to avoid polyspermy. One of them is fast, the other is slow. The fast reaction is accomplished by an electrical change in egg site of the, in egg cell membrane while the slow reaction caused by exocytosis of the cortical granules, as we, as we will see in the next few slides. So the fast block to polyspermy is achieved by changing the electrical potential of the excel membrane, so that the ion concentration, mainly sodium and potassium ions, within the egg differ greatly from those of its surrounding. This gives a potential difference between outside and inside of the membrane. So sperms cannot fuse with membrane having a, a positive resting potential. Although sperm can fuse with membrane having a resting potential of around minus 70 um, uh, millivolt. So this minus 70 millivolt is actually the optimum uh, 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 potential difference that enabled the sperm to fuse with the membrane. Any change of this uh, electrical potential difference will lead to a blockage of the sperm contact. Uh, and this uh, considered as the fast reaction of polyspermy. It is not known how the change in the membrane potential act on the sperm to block this uh, secondary fertilization. So what about cortical reaction? For cortical reaction, it starts with uh, the sperm bind by its binding protein on the sperm receptor on the egg membrane, egg cell membrane. You can see this is the egg cell membrane and this is the cytosol of the egg, this region. And this is the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum which is inside the uh, egg. So the fusion of the gamete membrane triggers, triggers activation of, so fusion of binding to the sperm receptor or binding receptor triggers autophosphorylation in this receptor tyrosine kinase. This autophosphorylation will activate another enzyme, which is PLC, phospholipase C. This phospholipase C, which is attached to the membrane, will bre break down PIP2 into two components. It will break PIP2 into IP3, and the diacylglycerol DAG. DAG stays in the membrane while IP3 migrate towards a special, a special a gate channel, a special gate channel on the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. 
The IP3, once bind to this channel, will enable the uh, um, efflux of calcium from inside the endoplasmic reticulum of the egg membrane to the cytosol. And as we will see in the next few slides, calcium is very important in the process of development of the egg. So from here, you can see the signal, signaling which will care about binding of the binding protein to the sperm receptor. The final uh, event is the release of the calcium into the cytosol of the egg. And on subsequent events, this leads to the swelling of the vital line membrane and the clipping of the sperm binding receptor, as we will see. So here again, we will see how this process is occurring, the process of cortical reaction. So initially, here is the sperm releasing his, its hydrolytic and the proteolytic enzyme from the acrosome. This, uh, this uh, 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 dissolves the jelly coat, as you can see, and you have uh, the cortical granules present inside the uh, uh, egg cytoplasm. After that, the sperm head form, as we, as we just we have just said, that there is a, a polymerization of the actin molecule to form actin uh, microfilaments, uh, which form the acrosomal process, which is uh, uh, coated by the binding protein. You can see here, this is the sperm binding, the, the, the binding receptor on the cell membrane. Soon after that, there is a fusion, fused plasma membrane between the egg plasma membrane and the head of the sperm. And you can see that after this process occurs, there is a start clipping or removing of the sperm receptor. And this actually is a very good advantage to prevent subsequent binding of any other sperm to the egg, egg cell membrane. Again, so initially the binding, which here it is the dot, black dots, binds to receptor on cell membrane. And you can see here after fusion of the uh, uh, sperm with the membrane, there is a clipping of the receptors and again, this will prevent subsequent binding of other sperms. Here, this membrane, here, this membrane now, this membrane is called the vital line membrane. And now it starts, the cortical, it starts a region of space appear between the vital line membrane and the egg cytoplasm. And it is termed now peri vital line space. Soon after that, you'll see that the, the nucleus or the head of the sperm have been internalized and they start the release of cortical granules into the space of the perivital line space. And now the vital line, vital line membrane have been changed to be a fertilization membrane. And this thickness of this layer will stop another entry of another sperm. So this process, the resulting fertilization envelope, it represents the process of a slow block to polyspermia. Okay. Again, we'll see another figure illustrating this process, and as well the molecules involved in this process. As we said, the sperm starts to bind, but by its extension or acrosomal process and passed, it's already passed over the uh, uh, jelly coat. Once it is in contact, the cortical granules, which is uh, inside the egg cytoplasm near the cortical region, start with time, as you can see, to approach to the cell membrane and start releasing its contents. You can see now the vital line envelope and it's already have like microvilli. So what is the event of these exocytosis of the cortical granules? It starts with the first event in which the cortical granule serine proteases cleaves the protein linking the vital line envelope to the cell membrane. That's why that's, that's, that's uh, to separate between the vital line membrane and cell membrane. As we said before, and a new space is generated, which is called a peri-vital line space. 
And this event starts with uh, a cortical granule serine proteases. Soon after that, there are a lot of mucopolysaccharides, a lot of mucopolysaccharides are released as well from the cortical uh, granules. Uh, this uh, mucopolysaccharide will make an osmat os osmotic uh, gradient causing water, causing water to enter, just like filling the space or swelling the space between the fetal line membrane and the cell membrane. So that's why the region here, the very vital line space is enlarged. Soon after that, three important molecules, which are the peri perixodase, perixodase uh, uh, UDX1 and OVOP, as well as transglutaminase TG, you can see these three molecules, are very important molecules to harden the vital line envelope. And after hardening of this vital line envelope, now we can say that the vital line envelope has been transformed now to be a fertilization envelope, and this will prevent further entry of another sperms. That's why it's called the slow process because it needs a time, but it's not much time, but it is faster than the fast process. Here we can see how the fertilization uh, uh, envelope is removed, is formed for the removal of excess sperm. So actually this is uh, like a, a, a real uh, photos. In, in figure A, you can see a lot of sperm are trying to uh, uh, fertilize the egg. Soon after, at this location, soon after one sperm contact and it's a binding protein bind with the receptor on the cell membrane and subsequent release of cortical granules and formation of very vital line space, the fertilization envelope start to develop at the point of entry of the sperm. Soon after that, you can see that the fertilization envelope try to extend to the right and try to extend to the left until engulfing all the, uh, to the egg in, in, in figure D, you can see that the fertilization envelope have covered all the egg and hence it will prevent any further sperm entry. You can see here again signaling events. The sperm contact and fusion leads to the activation of a G protein in the cell membrane. That leads to the activation of another protein, which is a, a SARC activation which lead to, as we said before, the activation of an enzyme PLC, phospholipase C, that leads to the breakage of PIP2 into IP3 and DAG, diacylglycerol. The diacylglycerol stay attached to the, uh, to the cell membrane, the egg membrane, while the IP3 migrate to the endoplasmic reticulum and, and the, uh, binds to a gate that releases the calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum. So why calcium is very important in the process of fertilization? Because calcium uh, triggers the cortical granules ex exocytosis, which lead, of course, to the slow block of polyspermy, and as well, in, it inactivates MAP kinase. And MAP kinase main function is to, uh, one of its function is um, uh, to stop the uh, cell cycle. So once it is inactivated, there is initiation of cell cycle, which is obvious because the egg, once it is fertilized, it needs to go for a, a successive a, a divisions, which will call which we which is uh, which is known as cleavage to increase uh, in number. Here you can see. Uh, the, the signaling events that occur inside the uh, egg. So once again, once the binding of the binding protein with the sperm receptor on the cell membrane of the egg, this induces the activation of a tyrosine kinase a SARC family protein that leads to activation of an enzyme phospholipase C that break down PIP2 into diacylglycerol and the calcium and the, and the IP3. This IP3 have a receptor on this gate channel, which is called IP3 gated channels. What's the meaning of IP3 gated channels? That's mean this gate will not open until IP3 comes and attached to the receptor to open these gates. Once the gate, gates are open, the calcium is 
uh, released from the uh, endoplasmic reticulum into the cytoplasm of the uh, of the uh, egg, and these these are the process of activation before gamete fusion because you can see the sperm is still outside. Once the gamete, the head of the sperm enters, there are some soluble factors which continue the activation uh, by the same process to, to, to have more calcium in the cytoplasm, okay? So these are the signaling events which occur inside the egg cytoplasm before uh, gamete fusion and after gamete fusion. And you can see that both of them lead to increase in the amount of calcium ions existing in the cytoplasm of the egg. So to see the whole effect of calcium uh, and the importance in calcium in the activation of the egg metabolism in the sea ocean, all start with a sp sperm binding or fusion to the egg cell membrane. So you can see this leads to increase in the sodium influx, which change the membrane potential, the change the membrane potential, leading to the fast block to, poly to polysperm. Another event, this binding or fusion to the egg cell membrane will lead to kinase stimulation, as we said, the uh, TK uh, activation, tyrosine kinase start family. This lead to the activation of a phospholipase C, which break down BIB2 into IP3 and the diacyl glycerol. The diacyl glycerol will activate a protein, another protein, it's called protein kinase C, that lead to uh, another change in the amount of ions through a uh, sodium uh, proton uh, bomb exchange. This will increase the intracellular pH inside the egg cytoplasm, which will lead eventually to the stimulation of protein synthesis, DNA replication, cytoplasmic movement, and morpho of morphogenic material. So actually all these, the increase in intracellular pH will, will potentiate or will direct the cell towards increasing its content for the next process of cleavage and, and the dividing in, and the increase in number after fertilization. For IP3 production, as we said before, IP3, we migrate toward, toward the uh, gate, which is on the endoplasmic reticulum to bind to the IP3 gated channels. This leads to the release of calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum into the cytoplasm. So what is the job of calcium ions in the cytoplasm? The first is it, 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 it tends to degrade cyclins, degradation of cyclins and inactivation of MAP kinase. And this leads to the restoration of mitotic cell cycle. The second event is activation of NAD plus kinase that leads to the conversion of NAD plus to NAD, uh, NAD P plus, And this leads to membrane biosynthesis. Of course, because the, now the fertilized egg or the, uh, or the zygote needs to divide. So it needs to go into mitotic cell cycle and it needs more membranes for the daughter cell to, to be formed. The third important event of uh, the release of calcium is the uh, cortical granule exocytosis, which of course will lead to a slow block to palismermy and the formation of hyaline uh, layer, which is separate the fertilization membrane from the cell membrane. Finally, the calcium as well aids and helps in the process of stimulation of protein synthesis and DNA replication and the cytoplasmic movement of uh, morphogenic material. Uh, and this conclude our uh, fourth uh, lecture.